What we're about to talk uh, about today is effective communication. Uh, and uh, uh, my name is Johannes. Uh, I have a background as a consultant for the past 12 years in strategic communications. I've been working a lot in the area between the government and it, government, uh, private companies, innovation, research, universities, and so forth. Uh, and the, been working with the Inbuckland School for a few years. Um, and what we're, we're going to talk about how you can communicate effectively with primarily customers, but also politicians and other decision makers. So, uh, just briefly, I'm from the company New Republic. Uh, we have an office in Stockholm. We actually have an office right across the hall, uh, and we have one up in the some say the northern part of Sweden, it's actually in the middle part of Sweden, but it's usually registered as the northern part. Um, we are 17, we are uh, a strategic communication firm uh, dealing with a lot of things in public affairs and public relations. We're going to talk about strategic communication on a broad level today. Uh, we have three issues that we really work with, with all our clients and with ourselves. Uh, we always try to aim for the results, and I'll come back to that as a major uh, and important objective when you are writing your own communication plan. What types of results do you want to achieve? Uh, we have a lot of clients who work with sustainability. We try to do that ourselves. Uh, and we are transparent, meaning that we uh, uh, inform uh, everybody with clients we do have, which is especially important when you work uh, in government-related areas, we think. Uh, when we do lobbying, we tell politicians which uh, companies we work for, uh, because we believe it's good for democracy, but it's also good for business. Uh, this transparency is something that our type of companies should do more, I think. Uh, and uh, it has been good business for us, because uh, everybody can see that we are not working for competing partners. Uh, this day regarding communication is for you. Uh, so please interrupt, ask questions, uh, or question whatever I say, because this, this is not traditional science. Uh, this is more of a, uh, more of an art form, I'd say. Of course there are basic things, and I will probably say them definitely this is the way, and um, take me with a grain of salt when I say that, because um, there's always an, uh, uh, an alternate way of doing things. Uh, so please ask, please question all the time, because I want this to be a dialogue. And the aim is for you to start building, as I said, your own communication strategy. And we'll have uh, different uh, small sessions where you will be able to write down what you think is your goal, which are your channels, and so forth. So, um, uh, but just to start off, basically, uh, writing communication for, uh, whether it's for the consumer, for business, or for government, it's basically the same thing, because it all starts with the recipient. It's not what you feel like you want to say, it's what they want to hear, what they need to hear. Uh, and very much when we're talking about what you have, technical solutions, it's the solution in itself. What the, how does it aid your customer? It's not the product in itself. Uh, that's the main focus, especially working with public relations and creating news and so forth. Nobody's interested in uh, talking about the product in itself. It's the societal issue that's the most important thing. And that's one of the things we're going to talk about further, how you can frame your communication to be the answer to the question. Um, anxiety is a very good driving force for buying, for getting people to buy things. Uh, sometimes we have the image of uh, milk, the, the skriet, which is a good image. Get your customer in that mode and they will probably buy something. <laughs> <laughs> Even because they have a huge problem or they're missing out on a great opportunity. Fear of missing out, sorry. What? Fear of missing out. Fear of missing out, exactly. <laughs> Uh, another part that is very important, the communication affects everything that you do. If it's a small manual, 
be sure that some of your company's main messages are in that manual as well, because that communicates. When you have a meeting, or when you're, if you're interviewed, go back to what is your main message all the time, because messages need to be repeated. Uh, so everything communicates. So try it always to have the basic message. And we're going to get into messaging. I know you have your uh, elevator pitch and so forth, and that's part of it. Most of it is, many of you probably have the work done, but we're going to look into how you can create messaging for creating news and so forth, and devising uh, messages for different audiences. Uh, and that's what you have uh, in, your, in your folders. Uh, and as I said, results is one of the objectives that we work with as a company all the time. Always uh, go back to the question, how does this communication activity help us reach our goals, the business goals? Always go back to the business goals when you try to communicate. Um, I worked with a small music store 10 years ago. Uh, with a, let's call him, creative owner. Uh, he wanted publicity for his own music store. Uh, so he came with the idea that, well, maybe we can get an old piano and get an old car and, and get the car to hit the piano just outside our street. And then we call the media and say, well, car hits piano. And maybe, maybe we'll get the store in, in the media. That could happen. It could be an interesting thing that a car hits a piano. And it's possible that the stores uh, would be included in the image. But then I asked him, but what type of message does that send? Reckless driver hates instruments? <laughs> uh, that's not the issue you want to uh, put forward. It's not the message you want to. So what is it that you want to do? Well, basically, you want to sell more stringed instruments. Great. Now, which instruments? Uh, do you have the best profit? Uh, where? Oh, we started selling ukuleles, he said. Okay, uh, maybe we should do something with that instead, I said. Uh, and they actually tried, and I think they succeeded afterwards, because this was after we worked with them, but the ID came up and when we worked with them, uh, to have a Guinness, Guinness Book of World Records of the most people playing the ukulele at the same time, outside their store. So they blocked the street, they had people playing the ukulele. That's what they got media attention for. And of course, then it's about the product. It's about people having fun playing the ukulele, that it's not difficult, that many people do it. That was the message. They could send ukuleles, not by a car hitting a piano. So just creating publicity or creating news, that's easy. But messaging publicity and news, that's where you need to work. And that's what we're going to talk about today. I'm talking too much. <laughs> so interrupt and ask questions as I, as I said. Um, I have a question. Yeah. So you said it's all about the solution, not the product. Uh, just a verification question, basically. I always tend to think about the why. Yeah. So why is the product doing something? Uh, you know, to me, solution product is kind of the same thing. It, yeah. Kind of. Well, um, that's, that's a good or question. Similar. Um, we, we start with the problem. Of course, the ones that creates the uh, anxiety or the fear of missing out. And then you have a solution for it. The technical things in the product or the product in itself is not the main issue always. It's how can you help them? How, how do you overcome? What are the results of your product? Uh, so the benefits, basically. Yeah, the benefits. Yeah. Which is kind of how we think of it. Yeah, why do you need it? But yeah, that's a, it's a good question. But oh, find out what, what are the results? How do we? What can we achieve? Uh, as I said, we uh, work a lot with uh, <clears throat> government issues and political issues. Uh, we work, for example, with a uh, I worked with a trade union, just for example. They were uh, they wanted their members to get access to higher education, uh, and uh, the messaging uh, in that area uh, was not in the I, I never started in the solution, uh, uh, the final. I started, what are the objectives? What, what, what do the audience want to, uh, uh, in this case, the politicians, what do they want to achieve? So this trade union had uh, white collar people, uh, mainly engineering, but not with a university degree. Um, 
And when I talked, for example, to uh, the Social Democrats, I was saying that, well, we need to provide a second chance for people who have a background, non, a non-academic background. They might even be the first in their family to go to high school. They need to be able uh, to uh, use the knowledge that they uh, acquired uh, while working to be able to get access to university. Uh, so this is something I'm talking to the Social Democrat, what, what I know that they want to achieve. So we're talking about their goals. I'm connecting myself to their goals. And thereafter, that's why we need a solution which would make it easier to get access by uh, validating work experience. And then I had a very technical, but that came further down the road. I had the same solution while talking to uh, someone, say, from the Conservative Party and say, well, do you know the backbone of Swedish industry? It's all these uh, high school engineers. This is a few years ago then. But, and when we have American companies come and they look at Swedish companies, they don't value them as highly as they could because they, it doesn't look like they have the qualification that they actually do. We need to give these people the opportunity to go to university and get their uh, knowledge validated and get access to further education. Therefore, we need to do this validation and so forth. Same solution, very different messaging. Uh, so, uh, what you try to help the audience achieve is basically uh, the solution that I'm talking about. But I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself, and you're going to get down to doing this in, in your own plan. But this is what we're going to talk about today. We're going from your business objectives. We'll always start with your business objectives because that's what is aiming your communication. As I said with the piano, the, the message wasn't to get people to hate piano, it was to sell more stringed instruments. That's where you need to go back to that for the messaging. Then we're going to define the audiences. Uh, and then go through messages, channels, activities, and finally, how do we evaluate what we do? Uh, and readjust our communication. And that's why you have this one, uh, that you can fill, start to fill out today as the basis for your communication plan. Uh, and if you do it on paper or, uh, or on the computer, it's up to you. But uh, we will, this is what we will work with uh, all day, uh, or this, this morning. Uh, we will have a brief break when it's suitable. I don't know exactly when we'll feel like it. So I will, if you say, oh, you're going too long, we'll take a break. <laughs> but I, I'll try to look, look into that. Um, so we're going to start with the first one. No, sorry, I'll go back. Um, with this one, just plot down what is your main business objective that you feel that you will have the aid of uh, communication to achieve. So we'll, we'll start with that. Just, just put it down. We'll pick up a few of them. Is it new customers, new markets, uh, X percent increase of sales? You do, define that so we can have that as a starting point for this. So take a minute or two just to write it down. We'll have a brief discussion on the different ones. So now you have. Uh, can we just hear a couple of them? So, yeah. what, what do you write now? What's your main business objective? Uh, for us, it must be a, a big thing: is uh, to um, to reduce the sick absence in companies and municipalities, and to get healthier employees in companies. That's yeah. That's the result of what you. But your main business objective that you want to achieve. For selling, is it increased sales to companies or by increase it for companies? Yeah, uh, increasing yeah. middle size, middle size. size okay, middle size companies. Yes, is there middle size companies. Yeah. Do you even have a particular sector in mind, or is it just middle no, size? It's, um, no, it's, um, we work with so many different kind of um, types of companies, but the companies between thirty-five up to two hundred employees. Yeah. So I would say they are the ones that don't have the traditional Fortox health as Correct. well. Correct. Yes. Correct. Okay. <laughs> uh, okay. Well, now we're narrowing down. That's what I'm yeah. talking about. That's, good. That's a very good one, Narrow. So what did you say? 
yeah, for, for our perspective, it's really easy. We, we want to have users in, into the platform. Uh, the more uh, PTs, personal trainers, and physiotherapists we can have there, uh, then they become attractable, communicatable, <laughs> and also they're a part of uh, entering our sales funnel. So we want users. But but the users are the, the professionals, not the uh, private, the individual private consumer, yes. right? Yeah. They are our first point of. Uh, How do you narrow it down even further? Uh, from are there chains of per for the gyms and so forth, or is it another? It can be definitely be so, but uh, I think mo most of the decisions are taken from the PT themselves. Okay. So you're yeah, you're narrowing the individual yes. personal trainers and the yeah great mm -hmm. yeah I believe we uh, we can um, make it possible for um, other businesses to uh, rely on a dedicated product when not a, a smartphone is 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 the reliable thing. And also, I think we uh, uh, make it possible for smaller business to actually start uh, using an IoT platform uh, scalable. But your primary consumer, or the ones that are buying your products, are primarily who? Uh, it's a business. It's the business. It's, yeah. Uh, so it's uh, it's both a small but even large you know, huge company. Yeah. yeah. So, so you have a pipeline, so they can use it for other areas, just yeah. so, I, so I understand. Yeah. So, um, we communicate with the, the wearable, yeah. uh, and the other companies have a medical sensor of some sort. It could be a diabetes uh, monitor, it could be a fall detector, it could be a stroke uh, measurement thingy. So some of your customers are in the room. Hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Great. Okay. Uh, so, just or anybody else want to share? Just wanted to see. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, defining the business objectives. This is what you're aiming for uh, with the communication. And why do we have it in the plan? Why do we have business objectives in a communication plan? Because this is supposed to be a document where you can go back and always remember. Oh, yes, this is why. It might, might sound stupid, but you need to remind yourself why are we doing this? Because, uh, and this is from the end, but if you, if you hire people like me, uh, you might run into people who love to do creative communication things and forget about the business objectives. Always go back to the business objectives, because as I said, it's easy to create communication and create uh, awareness but it has to be about the right thing. So always go back to that. And that's where you measure success. Does it help increase sales if that's the objective? Great. If it doesn't, yeah, you might be a well-known person who gets to speak on conferences, but if it doesn't help sales, does it help your company? No. That's why we go back to the idea of results, results, results. Uh, so, to whom do you speak? Who's your audience? When I mean, we're talking about us, uh, which are your customers. But we need to define that a bit broad, in a bit broader sense. We have primary and secondary audiences. And the next thing you, you will be able to do is put down your primary and secondary audiences. Uh, and we will try to ask, answer the question, how does the primary audience experience or describe the challenge that your product or service is designed to solve? We're back to the anxiety, or how do they describe it? Always for the participants problem. Uh, if we take the example of the sick leave, of course, it's very expensive to have people on sick leave. Uh, in, and that's the obstacle for the company. And you can help them solve that. You, you will help increase productivity by keeping people at work. It's self-explanatory. But as I asked, mm -hmm. it might be even be cheaper than a traditional company. And it could be a smarter way. I don't know. That could be a sales point for you, <laughs> to be specific. Um, so the next um, assignment for you is to define your primary and secondary audience. 
And to do that, uh, we designed two fairly easy questions. The first one is, who holds the key to success or failure, in effect? Who decides what to buy, regulate, in effect? Uh, in your case, for the, it's probably the HR person at the company, or if it's a smaller, it's the CEO or yes. equivalent. Uh, but you do have uh, regulatory issues as well. Because I know that the organization for Cortex Sensor are working for things that might work against you. So there are national political issues uh, you might have. Um, when it's for uh, business to government, procurement is always an issue. And that has implications on a national level. It has on, it could be on a regional level. And it has on the um, person uh, writing the procurement, so forth. So you have uh, decision makers on very, very many levels that affect uh, your business. So you need to define who holds the key to success. Who are the decision makers, the primary audience? The secondary audience, to whom do the decision makers listen? So as I said, we often work very closely with uh, companies and organizations that are selling to <coughs> business to government in different sort. Uh, very often to uh, um, local or regional authorities. Uh, and there the rules for procurement are extremely important. We've done very, very many uh, different projects with regard to um, government uh, procurements. Uh, first you have the national, what, what types of uh, demands can you put in these? And then you always have the local and regional um, aspects of that as well. And uh, they're quite free to, uh, to write the procurements as they wish. And they can be defining you in or out of the market. So you have uh, politicians who need influence, and you have the uh, uh, and other people as well. So to whom the decision makers listen? For uh, for politicians, it can be trade unions, which is very important for things such as Cortex and I get back to that. <laughs> uh, if you're trying to sell to local and regional authorities, that could be one thing. As we trade, we are working with occupational health care. Okay. It's our, our partners. Oh, ah, okay. Yeah. Great. Yes, we were well, incorporating the occupational health care since many years back. Oh. Yep. So then, then, then so we're a white, white label. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but trade unions would be one. Uh, of course, the uh, uh, for many of you, the uh, medical associations, of course, are extremely important, the views of those. Uh, how's, what's the discussion within medical expertise? Uh, even if they might not make the most important de decision, they are very important in influencing, for example, political decision makers or <coughs> others. So, uh, the second one, who, to whom do the decision makers listen? So, now I would like you to take 10 minutes, do it by yourself, or discuss with, uh, amongst yourself for a few minutes, who are your primary audience? There could be several of them, actually. But define that, and then we go to the second one. So take a few minutes. Um, you might need five, ten minutes just to try to define it, and then we'll discuss different ones. If you have defined your audience, does that somebody want to share, share openly just how you think your primary and secondary? <laughs> <laughs> it's all secret, right? No, no. 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 For me, yeah. uh, the person who has hypertension or high blood pressure. That's uh, straightforward. This is the person. They yeah. The benefit, they pay for it. Yeah. How do you find them? How do you, do you know them? which they are? How do you know how, which, what type? Because that's fairly broad definition. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah. Okay, I can uh, narrow it down. For yeah. Things, uh, with hypertension and who know about in India. <laughs> well, only okay. 7 million people. Yeah. But um, how... Uh, but that's not the question. The no. question wasn't how do I find them. No. That's, yeah. that's kind of coming yeah, that's, to, it's, me, yeah. to me at least. Yeah, but for me, uh, I, it's, a, it's still a fairly broad primary audience. Uh, yes. Are there diff... Are they... I'm uh, not hunting big game. I'm hunting rabbits. <laughs> as it were. 
Okay. Yeah, they, it's a big, big to see, uh, total big to see, you know, it's marketing, social media, yeah. and those kinds of things. Okay. Okay. Anybody else? Yeah, yeah we'll just go back over that, that, That's the primary. The secondary. The secondary. Uh, well, I actually have another primary, private healthcare providers. Yeah. Uh, who can help me gain access directly to the first one. Okay. Uh, and secondary is also very specific right now. Uh, I don't know the names, but doctors at a company called Smart Healthcare in, with my partner in Visual. Okay. So, so. They, they can help me gain access to and influence yeah. the patients. Well, that's very specifically <laughs> defined. Yeah. Well, specific is good. Yeah, it is. The more specific you are, you can use your resources a lot more effectively. Yeah. Uh, and that's because we're, we're scarce on time when you're an entrepreneur. Uh, uh, anybody else want to share something? No? So, do you have to find your primary audience? Do you have to find your secondary audience? So, we'll go to messaging. What do you say to them? Uh, I know you have, as we said, your elevator pitch, but from, from this experience we've said, a good message, uh, um, parts of it, we have a, the next, uh, the next thing you will be doing is crafting your message, and you, if you have an elevator pitch, you can use it, but tr try to aim it at your primary and secondary audience the next time. Um, we often talk about, as we were talking about, show the results. Uh, to hi and highlight facts when you use a message. Uh, try to address the different perspective interests and the challenges. Uh, going back to what, what we said about fear of missing out, is there a societal uh, perspective that you can use? And always limit the number of messages, because you yourself will probably not remember more than three at a time to provide in the year. Recipient will only remember one of them, and you need to repeat them a few times. So don't be too don't be too uh, elaborate when you when you're messaging, uh, and incorporate the facts, emotions, and examples. Uh, this is just a way for introducing how you create a a good message. Uh, usually, uh, this is one of the easiest way that we try to create good messaging. Uh, it should answer these three questions. Uh, anyone versed in traditional uh, uh, rhetoric uh, knows the apples, palpus, logos. This is basically just in uh, uh, expressed in a little different way. The first thing is, ask what do you want your audience to do? Is it to buy, deregulate, deregulate finance? This can be addressed to your different tribes of both primary and secondary audiences. Uh, if it is the procurement officer, you want them to write a procurement that, say, uh, uh, especially enhances the use of technical devices over uh, physical devices. I don't know, uh, but you want them to decide. This is what you want them to want them to do. Because if you haven't addressed what you want the audience to do, you may create uh, uh, highlight a problem for which they find a different solution. You want them to do something that aims at your solution, finally. So, what do they have to know to be able to do that? This is the fact-based arguments uh, about your product. Why is your product the best, basically? Or why does it solve? So go back to the facts. Uh, and then finally, how do they feel about you or your product? This is attributes that shows the character of your company or product. Can you give an example? Yes. Thank you. Uh, well, uh, for, well, first, I'm not going to This is, is it uh, effective? Is it uh, secure? Is it efficient? These <coughs> types of words. The reason is that we're looking for words that you can use in your messaging to, to uh, provide them, to make the, the buyer secure in that they're, or the decision maker, if that's, oh, this is the way to go. This is, this is feelings. <laughs> we're going for the gut, mm -hmm. or the heart. Here we're going for the mind, mm -hmm. and here we go for the action. Mm -hmm. So that's another way of doing this. Action, mind, and heart. Uh, these three elements need, uh, is necessary for a really, really good message. 
I'm not looking for a uh, tagline as a message that is brief. It could be a message for two or three sentences or something, but it needs to incorporate these things. Uh, so, what I would like you to do now is try to, with regards to your primary audience, try to create your message by answering these three questions. And what I usually do when we work with this is, first, we start with, what is the answer to this question? Not, not creating the message. What is the answer to this question? What is the answer to this question? When you have these three answers, then you try to create the message out of the answers. So take 10 minutes to start with, just to write down the answers to these three questions. And then I'll walk around the world and then we'll discuss different messages for you. Okay? After constructing your message, depending on where, um, on which audience, and uh, I've been listening to all of you, I've been hearing very good crafted messages so far. Uh, and uh, uh, as this is, this is the beginning of a communication strategy and plan for you. Uh, you will have the embryo for it, not a finished product, but this is in order for you to uh, better learn how to both uh, work by yourselves and perhaps with, with, them, uh, with other consultants to, to produce your own plan afterwards. I'll, I'll get back to things I think you should uh, bear with you when you speak with other, uh, speak with consultants within communication, uh, what things you need to consider when doing that. But, but that's one of the, the final slides. What I want to do now is transition from the message. Um, I know there are, you, are, you haven't finished them, but this is a start. I think the three questions that we presented here is, is an effective way just to, to think of this anytime you you need to perform a message or in a sales meeting as well. Uh, so, who is your spokesperson? Which is the next thing. Some of you have already uh, discussed it. Uh, it's already on this issue. Uh, but it's basically answering these questions. Who does it best? Who do the audience trust? Who has the time and wants to do it? Very often, people start in the other, <laughs> the opposite direction. Who wants to do it? Uh, that's not necessarily the person who has the time to be always trusted trust who doesn't best. So always start in that area and end there. Um, who the audience trust is usually someone who's like that. Not always. In effect, it's not always the CEO who's the best spokesperson. Uh, as I like I said, we work, we have worked with Inbuckham School for some time, we work with Min Doctor uh, at the moment. Uh, they are very specific uh, of the use of spokespersons. Anything that is financial, that's the CEO. But anything that has to do with the medicine, that's the head of medical issues, of course. So it's a medical doctor. Ah, mm, Exactly. Very always different people that depending on the audience. So as, as soon as it's a medical issue or uh, with regards to patients or new patients, it's always the medical advisor or the, the head of medical who's the spokesperson. But when you're talking to finance, it's the CEO because uh, he has the most credibility. You wouldn't put the medical doctor forward to speak to fi finance. Uh, so consider Who's your best spokesperson, depending on the audience? So when do you use the language of the other? Uh, <laughs> pass. <laughs> pass. Okay. I'll, I'll be really quiet now. <laughs> uh, he, he can fill both roles. Yeah. Yeah. But um, so um, there is an exception to this rule. Can anybody guess when? Uh, crisis. Exactly. <laughs> in terms of in any crisis, uh, the there's one basic rule. Uh, in a crisis, go low. Uh, 
it sounds worse than it is. But you need to protect the people on the top in a crisis uh, management situation. That's when you put forward somebody who's in charge of communication or a bit of a lower level to put the first message out. Because uh, you never know if a crisis will uh, exceed. You need top level to be able to step in in that moment. Uh, so that's when we work with clients that get into different crisis management situations. We usually say, don't put the CEO out, put somebody else out. But of course there are exceptions. Uh, last fall, um, there was the Me Too movement, especially among the actors in Sweden. We worked with the uh, National Organization for all the theaters uh, with regard to this. At that time, uh, the chairpersons of the National Organizations for Theaters and the National Organizations for Actors jointly produced the first statements. So that was the top level on both organizations because it was such a serious uh, issue. And they wanted to make a bold statement directly. It wouldn't have worked if you only had press people at that time. So there's always an exception. But very often we suggest put somebody who's uh, lower level out first in a crisis situation so you can step up if there's something new coming out. But then, this is this. So, who, who are your spokespersons? Are there different ones? Do you have a main one? Uh, that's just, and my suggestion is, when you have the, uh, this one, just, just write it down so you have it in your plan to start with. Uh, and define if you have the different ones for different audiences. <coughs> And um, as you can see in the plan, we have uh, a, uh, uh, a heading for the audience-specific messages. And I've discussed that with several of you already. This is just for you to be able to organize your own plan later on. Uh, I wasn't planning on going into these in detail right now, but, uh, but this is something uh, I suggest that you do. For example, I mean, when you talk to doctors, if that's the case, you have some messages. When you talk to patients, you have different messages. And try to write them down. Uh, even if they're not perfect, write it down, because you need the essence going back to the three questions. Uh, that's better than having nothing. No. <laughs> So you have defined your audience, you have the overarching message, you might have audience-specific messages, you have spokesperson or spokespersons for the different audience. Uh, meaning we're here. I want you to go to both, how do you reach them? What types of channels? So this is the next part that we're going to go through, channels and activities. Uh, and we usually talk about three categories of channels, earn, own, and pay. Uh, and just to show what, what do we mean by these things. Uh, the earned is traditional media. Somebody else makes a decision that, well, this is interesting. I'll publish that somehow. Do you need to put something out that somebody else makes a judgment over to uh, produce? Uh, so traditional media, social media, of course, uh, influencers of different. Why? Why would they uh, uh, talk about your product? How did you earn their trust? This is this is trust. This is fact based and so forth. Uh, why do you get invited to seminars or conferences? This is because you're an expert. Is because you have new uh, knowledge of some sort. But this is earned. And others, of course. The owned. Well, this is something you yourself produce. This is another channel. Your web page, when you hold meetings or you arrange seminars or conferences, your own social media outlets. Social media is a, a, a particular one. As you can see, it's in all three categories. Some people actually have four categories, calling the fourth one shared. Uh, but we 
you usually talk about the, uh, the three different ones because anything that's shared is mainly earned. Somebody else decides to share it, but it's produced sometimes through your own social media that you own. So I think it's easier to talk about the three ones. Uh, newsletters that you put out, you own them. If you produce apps of some sort, that's your own channel uh, that you can have information. And of course, there are other, other ways, but these are some of the main ones that you own, you control. Uh, and of course, you have the paid ones. You have advertising in traditional media or web, you have advertising in social media. A lot of people nowadays pay influencers. Uh, if I'm looking into the future, just a few years, I'd say this has been high. I think it's going to be less important in a few years. Uh, with, with getting it paid. Though, Earned influencers are always more important because they have a higher credibility. The paid influencers, I think, are going to lose credibility if they're not transparent about it. You mean like Blondie and Bella and such things, or what? Yeah. That's an example. Yeah, that's, that's a co very concrete example. I think they are, they've had their heyday. I think they are losing in importance. But that's my analysis of what I think is going to happen, or maybe it's just because I hope that. But, <laughs> uh, I might be biased. Uh, of course, there are a lot of events and seminars, conferences you have to pay to get in, pay to play. Um, but but, but don't, yeah. don't you think that, that as an example, that, that she, she it happens to be that person, now there are yeah. several others, of course, but don't you think that, that she's building like a brand? She's building a brand and it does, yeah. And she would be moving over to O. Yeah, she yeah she's she's definitely moving over. No, I think she, she's moving over to earned because uh, she's building her own brand, doing things. Of course, she gets paid to do things. She gets paid to be in commercials, but you have a lot of I'd say lower level, uh, which I think is going to be less important. You'll have a few stars, and they they will uh, sponsorships or CSR things is of course something you pay for in some way. Um, just. I mean, we as a company, uh, we cooperate with FC Luxembourg. Uh, we cooperate with Östersund football. It just happened to be what we think are two of the most interesting football clubs in Sweden. But it's not because they play football. Uh, it's because they do things outside of football that we like, that we can uh, cooperate with. The uh, uh, Östersund and their engagement in culture and local uh, um, issues and so forth and trying to open up in a new way their work against uh, violence uh, both on, on outside the football field and so forth which is something we really really like to work with. Efterhusenwort has a lot of interesting things with integration and job creation and so forth. We do a lot of work with the, with the labor market that suits very well for us to work with them. Of course, we pay for that, but it's something that's in our interest and that helps us do business as well. So these are also things that you can get paid. Another channel, but these are basically the types of channels that you can use to get in your message out. Uh, any questions regarding that? Because next we're going to go into uh, which ones are the best for you, but um, is there, yeah. Um, there is a choice to use your company's social media account or yeah. your personal social media account. That's a good and, question. Uh, and uh, I see different companies using different strategies. <coughs> um, what's your uh, You'll have to look at what's the, uh, the specific company, of course. Um, I know some companies, uh, very, very, or many companies have a combination, I would say. Um, where the uh, individuals are also uh, the product. If, I mean, for, from like mine, a consultancy firm, of course we have a, a, a social media of our own, but the individual consultants are their own brands as well. There it's very important. If you, it's a product, uh, well, the problem with using the company, it's a bit generic sometimes, though you can create a dialogue with your 
customers, especially business to consumer. Business to consumer, the brand is important. Business to government, the brand, not so much. It's the individual behind, because you need a spokesperson with credibility. The brand name does usually not have that same type of uh, credibility. So uh, I would suggest if you work towards government and you have a medical issue or you have a medical doctor or something, use that spokesperson with regards uh, if if he he or she uh, can uh, can handle it. And, yeah. uh, so also, are they are they good at using social media? Not everybody is. And of course you can learn, but it, it is a trade, you need to learn it, you need to be active on it. So I wouldn't say there's a, it's not a general answer, but uh, depending on your audience, uh, it's the spokesperson you need. That's a very good question. I have another re reflection on this. We, yeah. we, we have like a company account, yeah. and there are really many articles debating like healthcare, and it's like how, what do you say? I mean, how much can you write? I mean, it's like this with the political correctness. At the, we want, like, in the long term, we want to make like a business with yeah. the, the healthcare companies and the state. And at the same time, I mean, we don't want to criticize too hard. But, but if you're always like only politically correct, it's boring as well. And I'm, and I'm, <laughs> that's a very good question as well. Uh, it's, a fi it's a fine line being critical and challenging and uh, still trying to maintain a good relationship. Um, this is, isn't that a case where it could be a, a person as opposed to a company? Yeah, it's and easier a person for a person to have it, yeah, an the, opinion. Yeah, it's easy for the person to have the opinion and drive it. Uh, and the company opinion, that's why I say it's usually better to use the company uh, with the consumers uh, and not with government and other companies. Two company uh, accounts talking to each other. Mm. Or would you would you read that? <laughs> I'm also thinking is is doesn't it also matter if your audience is the patient, the, the yeah. end consumer, because then you maybe want a more personal approach, or it's relevant with a more personal approach. Yeah. But if your audience or your customers are actually companies or governments, they don't care if you have to. No, no, no. So yeah, and, and um, so I mean, a lot of a lot of people have several accounts: one for business, and one for the private, and so forth. So, yeah. if, but if you're built, I would say if you're in your area, you're very often building the role of the expert. That's one of the best roles you can have in the media, being the expert in something, and the individual is the expert, not the company. So I would, I would try to build that brand, try to build that spokesperson. Uh, that was one of our strategies uh, for helping companies to build the expert role in some way. Because then you will get invited to seminars, conferences. You, you don't need other influencers. You will be the influencer. I mean, that's the role you're looking for. But you have to earn it, and that takes time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, a uh, it, that is a real challenge to work with. And then you have to decide which, I mean, we could talk for a couple of hours on which types of social media you should use. Is it LinkedIn? Is it Twitter? What is that most effective? That depends on where your audience is. Uh, I would say that your audience is probably only partly on Twitter when you have political decision makers and the reporters, they're very active. I would say LinkedIn is getting more uh, these days. But that depends on. Is getting more what business to business? Yeah, yeah, I think so too. Right? Uh, and business to government. Yeah, I would say as yeah. well. Um, so Microsoft changed a little bit. Yeah. Level of thinking. Yeah. So, so I think you, you're moving. But that, that's a discussion on, on strategy level. What what kind of news you put out there? Um, but these are the different, roughly the different uh, types of channels. So. How do you get to, I'm going to focus now, not on your own, on your earned. So what is news? Because to get to the earned, you basically need, as I said, be the expert and produce news. So this is earned? Yes. You can use it for the other channels as well. Uh, uh, you can use it for paid 
but it's to be able to be to get something that it's an earned channel, you basically need to have something that's newsworthy. Uh, there's you've probably heard of it. I mean, the the old introductory course to journalism is uh, dog bites man, not news. Man bites dog. That's news. Mm -hmm. That's sort of the basic principle. Uh, well, for a company, we try to look at two things. One, news you already have in your organization, and the other is the news you can create. So, new persons, hey, you have a new uh, head of the research, you have a new head of medical, I mean, that's news that you can use for a brief press release. Uh, who would write about your new head of uh, innovation? Well, maybe if they're a member of a trade union, that trade union would do it. Uh, maybe if they look at what they've done previously, maybe they're from those smaller towns. You need to look at the different types of channels to do that. Or you do it in your own LinkedIn. And then it, if it's well-crafted, people will start to share it. And then it's earned. So if you use these news in the right way, even in your own channel, such as the social media, it may move over to earn to get to be shared. So new persons, of course, new products is something, uh, but they need to be framed to be interesting uh, to be shared. So they need to, and we go back to the message, what type, what, what are you, uh, what problem does your product solve? You go back to the societal issue. Uh, that's one of the things we always look at when we report the company. Okay, what's the societal issue? Because that's what makes journalists tick. What type of problem for a broader audience does this, does this solve? Uh, your annual reports, that's something new. If it's numbers or if it's uh, number of patients that you have or whatever. Numbers, numbers, numbers from annual reports can be used. This is something you produce anyway. Use it. And it's not the necessarily the numbers that's your message you go back to the same message you created previously you just use this as a vehicle to get your message out the annual report doesn't matter if you have a plus or a minus the black or red numbers it's the ambition that you're looking for it's what you're doing afterwards it's the message you go back to always uh, new contracts new deals uh, that's interesting. It might be a joint uh, statement of some sort, and uh, how you use it. We'll get back to that. But this is also something that, if you if you open uh, major business magazine, look at what types of news is it that they they present. These are the things that you're in, you have in there. Uh, new research. Maybe you have been involved in some something or. You might even use research from somebody else that applies to your product. You could present that. But, uh, uh, it doesn't have to be a formal press release. It might be a phone call to a journalist. Or you can tweet about it and say, this new research shows that. And you have your basic message. So you don't have to produce it yourself. But this is things that are already out there. Prizes, contests, I suppose some of you have entered. Have yeah, sure. Question. Today, the European Union are about to decide if we are, like, in the future, are allowed to, like, link to, like, a research yeah. article and stuff like this. What do you think about this? Oh, um, when I heard the, uh, it might go through the judiciary uh, uh, committee, but it um, needs to be, uh, developed to go through the parliament afterwards. Um, linking to official, I don't, to be honest, I don't know how they're going to be uh, uh, limit that. Uh, then we wouldn't be allowed to do this anymore. Well, specifically, it wasn't the link itself. It was producing text from the uh, research that they were talking about, for example, from Google. The small summaries that Google had, uh, it's the text from that that was the issue, not the link in itself. Mm -hmm. uh, so the link wouldn't be a problem, uh, and it's the auto-generated text that's the issue in the uh, what they were discussing this uh, for the 
as I understood it on the radio this morning when I listened to it. So it's automated generated text as the issue. If you rewrite it yourself, that wouldn't be a problem. Okay. So, okay, so <coughs> if you steal Google generated text and copy it, just copy paste, then it could be, but it's only a suggestion uh, that's in the Judiciary Committee. It will probably be even out somehow. Yeah. So that's not, not something we can do right now. It could be in the future, but right. if you but rewrite if you, it. If you, want it, if you want to share a link like that, yeah. it just works better if you put your own text. Exactly. Please share, yeah. read this, this is really wrong. Yeah. And then, super short question, <coughs> yeah. quotation marks. Read yeah. this because it is about this yeah. and it's so relevant to us. Yeah. But it, it's yeah. a lot better to rewrite it. I, I, I thought it was like the link. Okay. No, no, it's not the link in itself. It's the only generate text. That's the issue right now. Uh, so use that. Yeah, I was going to say, prices contest. You might have already entered once. Uh, you might have won once. You can also create once. Uh, and win them. <laughs> well, there are there are companies that do that. I find that a bit questionable. But but I mean, create prices for your customers. Create prices for the best uh, cardiovascular doctor within this innovative field, and you have a small. I mean, you usually have to be a bigger company, with a bigger budget, and so forth. But it's a way uh, to create uh, news for your audience. Uh, anniversaries. Uh, there's there's a day for basically everything. <laughs> Official day for art or whatever. Use those days. That's a way to uh, use uh, to to get out your message in the media. If there's uh, Valentine's Day, we focus on the heart. Okay. Yeah. Okay. There are no, there, There's a day for basically everything. Yeah. Um, there's an organization for uh, Pen Day. I haven't seen Pen Day. Pen Day, have not yet. No, for uh, people with bowel issues. Uh, there's a special day for that, and the organization for the bowel issue they uh, they have a prize. Um, it's the best it's public stupid. best public toilet in Sweden. <laughs> uh, and they use that to create awareness for people with bowel issues. Uh, do you know the prices? For you shipping for a No. <laughs> Two rolls of toilet paper. Oh, okay. And uh, and the award in itself. That's it. What's the name of the organization? Uh, Morgantana Kuka. Yes, right. It's a very cheap price. And they give it to the best public. And they have their members vote on it somehow. And they get a bit of publicity every year for one day. Very simple, they create awareness for the importance of their issue and for the importance of nice public restroom, which of course is for their audience and their members a very important issue. Yeah. Yeah. So it doesn't have to be right. difficult. It's easier for an uh, organization than for a company. But companies can do these things and many, very many do. I mean, I uh, boasted earlier that we have won two prizes. Of course, it's a private company doing research into consultancy firms that wanted to help them develop that gives up these prices. But it works, and we like it, and we participate. So, um, uh, well, financial results uh, could be different from annual reports. Uh, that, that can also be interesting, especially if you're looking for finance. That could be very important, depending on what stage you're in for the company. The last one is policy initiatives. Um, a lot of companies are careful, and you stated that, but how do you interact with government, with government initiatives? And if you want to be, uh, you want to build a relationship, you don't want to critique too hard. But proposing a new policy initiative doesn't have to be critique. It's being constructive. Uh, and that's something we often help our clients with. Um, you look at, I, we've been working, for example, with, um, say, I think we were working with a construction company, uh, and they're very good at, uh, let's say, building small houses. Of course, a policy initiative that would promote building the small houses in some sort, that would enhance that, is something they can put out and get politicians to discuss. 
That would broaden their market. Very important. But a new policy initiative framed uh, with, uh, with regard to um, uh, current events is a way to get your news out. Uh, so, and that can be either from a broad societal perspective. I mean, there's a lot of companies uh, historically has tried to show how they can uh, help us uh, beat climate change. Uh, but it was a lot easier 10 years ago, and that ended up in a lot of what's called greenwashing. That you're saying, oh, we're going to solve this by providing you with this sandwich that you eat in the morning, and you're helping solve the climate. I mean, we actually saw those types of ads and these types of statements from a lot of companies previously. You can't do that anymore, so you need to be reasonable with your claims. Um, but uh, policy initiatives in different forms is, is a way to, to get a message out, especially when you have a business to government product. Um, we have a few more examples of this, but th this is what we usually do when we work with companies. We try to look at what do you already have and what can you create to create news, and which can be used in the different channels. Um, well, I thought we, yeah, we're going to do one more thing. So, what types of tools do you have in order to get your message out? Well, I already me I mentioned a few. Issue the press release. It's fairly simple, actually. Uh, write it as the most simple article that you can imagine. Uh, try to do it as a, how would, the, how would this, the news that I'm trying to put forward, how would it look in the evening paper? And look at how evening papers are written. It's a simple headline, preferably not with a company name in it, because that would, they wouldn't use that. You can have a company name later. You have a brief introduction uh, that states what is new, preferably in the first sentence. A new report says that, or a new research says that, uh, the new CEO of, start with something like that. And then you, you get down to your message, uh, the heart of everything is partly in the, uh, the first paragraph, but it's also in a quote from, if it is the spokesperson you need, uh, if it is the medical doctor, it's the CEO, mm -hmm. depending on which angle you use. But it's your simple press release. Uh, the first one you do will probably not get any attention, maybe not the second or the third. Uh, but after a while, you get traction. It's easier, you get better at writing, you see what works and what doesn't. And this text you can use also, of course, for your website. You can use it for a newsletter, you can use it for a brief tweet, and you link it to the press release. But how do you get it published? I mean, do you send it like, to different journals? Yes. Yeah. Um, there are very many different ways of getting a press release out. Uh, there are we work with several different ones. You can use, for example, My News Desk, yeah. uh, which is directly, uh, and they collect report, uh, reporters' email addresses and so forth. If you work with us, we have our own specific lists for different areas, because we always update that in order to see who wrote about what recently. Uh, there are other companies that are specialized in this. Uh, I would also suggest that you always note uh, when you read things in your own area who wrote about this note the name and the email address because if they wrote about something you're interested in regarding your company they would probably be interested in writing something similar when you have something so keep that note that all the time that's a good, that's a but point. it's a fairly simple it's a no-brainer but it is <laughs> yes, but you need to do it uh, and if you have a uh, media monitoring system, some of them you can search for which reporters wrote about this issue for the last month, the last year, and so forth. There are tons of different ways of doing this, but the easiest one is, what do you read who wrote it? Um, write a report. Um, fairly simple, the report doesn't have to be 100 pages and you've been working on it for half a year. We produced one uh, that was issued Last week, uh, we've been working with the uh, Carolinsk Institute at the uh, Royal Institute of Technology at Stockholm University, together with uh, Academic Studies. They want to influence the government and influence companies in order to get better uh, communication between the universities in Stockholm. 
Uh, they've had different types of reports and uh, suggestions of how this should be done with buses and uh, bicycles and, or roads for bicycles and so forth. We just took all of these previous reports and statements and uh, put them in a five or six page new report with simple illustrations of where this should be done and we argued for that the universities are uh, world class uh, researchers and that they are on a higher national level. Fairly simple things, but this is something that shows why are these universities important, what are they contributing to in Stockholm, and why do they need better physical communication? Why do the researchers need to be able to go between universities? It answers basically those questions. And it's a fairly simple report that can be produced. These are the facts. And of course it ends with a couple of suggestions that they want to produce. So that type of report, and it, we have a new report that says, that is the basis for a press release. It's the basis for an op-ed. It's the basis for calling a reporter that you read about, wrote something similar. We have a new report. You, you can get it exclusively first. We will issue it in next week, but you'll get it first. Do you want to write about it? Maybe. That's also a way of working it. You may arrange your own seminar. Maybe on the basis of the report, which is, which is exactly what we did last Friday with this report. It was a seminar. I can be honest and say we tried to get an op ed published, but we, it was a bit too nice. We weren't critical enough. <laughs> and that's all the, the decision for the urn is always uh, on the, the publisher. I can never guarantee to write an op ed that will be published. I, we have experience in writing op-eds and usually know um, how, how to write them and how to, uh, how to try to get them to be published, but you can never guarantee that. The same thing with the press release. There's no guarantee for getting it out, but experiencing knowing how to write them enhances the possibility of getting that. Um, well, of course, the traditional face-to-face -face meetings, uh, arranged conferences, the, uh, as I said, the correspondent with media. Don't un underestimate the direct connection. A lot of people are a bit hesitant when it comes to contacting reporters. It's a bit scary to call them, but they get called all the time when people want to do this. You won't be the first, you won't be the last, but if you stick to your basic message and what's the news, you need to have something that's news and go back, and then we can go back to them. Which are your news? That's that's what we need to put forward to them. Uh, and any your own contacts, uh, the people you you meet. If you have the newsletter, try to get people to sign up or sign them up. Now GDPR, you need to opt out all the time, so that that's an issue. But these are some of the tools. Of course, there are a lot more. You can go into a lot more detail. This is just for you to get a first idea of what you can work with, which is incidentally what you're about to do right now and go back to work. Uh, so my suggestion now is based on your audience and your message, which are the most relevant channels for you to reach the primary audience? Is it a trade union paper or is it a channel of your own or is it a national magazine or is it a conference or is it meetings? Try to define your, let's say, three most relevant channels to start with. Uh, so take a few minutes to that and I'll, I'll, I'll listen and walk around and we can discuss that, okay? So, we'll, we'll get back to this. Um, when you define what channels are the most relevant for you, then of course you need to go on and try to define, based on the audience, message and channels, what activities are necessary. Uh, and we're a bit short on time, and as we said previously, this is a way for you to start thinking about these and start building your platform. So, what things are necessary? Because what we talked about earlier is what can you do? We try to provide as many tools as possible, and I may throw out ideas of what you can do, but what is really necessary to do right now? That's what you need to prioritize. Uh, and as you can see in the, uh, in the 
basis for your plan. We've actually designed a very simple action plan for this. Execution, priority activity, deadline, and in charge. This is just for you to be able to fill in and have this as a, a living document that you work with all the time. Uh, and here's where you put all the, the ne necessary uh, actions. Uh, we have about 20 minutes before we round this up, and I'm, what is important for me is that you, you get to get out what you need. So I have a couple of things that I wanted to add to this, which with regard to measuring and so forth, but that's just a brief couple of things. And, what you should think about when working with a communication agency. But I really want to give you time for further questions and issues that you want to So I'm, I'm just, my idea is to go fairly quickly through a couple of these things, and then we'll have a, an open discussion of what you want to learn more about. Is that OK? Uh, so finally, on. Uh, to get measurable objectives, so you know that you're doing the right thing. Uh, everybody has heard about the SMART goals yep. and how to do that, so that's basic. But there's an important definition here when it comes to the communication activities. Uh, it's to define your communication objectives. And remember, these are different from your business objectives. Always have your business objectives, what you want to achieve. That's the backbone of what you do. But the communications objectives are ways of reach, reaching these. So they can be measured by either action or result, or both. This is to see uh, if you're doing the right thing. For example, your uh, communication objective when you cross action is to issue three press releases. That's a way to force you to do something, to do communication activities the action, but the result is you want at least 10 reporters to write about it. Now we're, now we're talking about measuring the quality of what you're doing. So first that you do it, and then the quality, if it will get published. So you can have these goals. Or arrange two seminars, that's the action, at least 20 potential customers to attend. That's the result for the communication activity. In the end, the business objective is of course in the next step to give maybe half of these to buy your product, or at least one. But that's the business objective. These are the communication objectives. And when we work with clients, we always try to have these types of objectives to see, are we doing the right thing? And then, always go back to the business objective. Can we see that it leads to better business? Uh, so we won't, as I said, throw a piano out and get a great, we might issue a press release uh, about the piano and the car that hit it. Uh, we might get reporters to write about it, but if it doesn't affect your business, it's not good anyway. So always go back to it. But this is a way to measure if, you're, if your communication works. Uh, just to help. Uh, and as I said, always evaluate the value, evaluate, looking at the goals, but also um, when, if you, for example, have uh, working with social media, what is it that makes certain posts uh, be shared and not others not be shared? What is it that you write about? Well, something is working. Uh, always evaluate that uh, regularly to see what you need to write more about. Or maybe it's only two people reacting to a certain uh, post. But if it's the right people, if it's the customer, maybe that's better than 15 other looking at it. Always I look at, is the right audience reacting to your communication? Uh, you can have a gold meeting with one person and get that one person to uh, produce the action that you need. That's a sim very simple goal and it's very simple to measure. But if that's the most important thing you have, well, that's what you focus on. Uh, so always go back to the evaluation. Now, what I wanted to say, there are, tons of different types of terms that work with communication. I mean, um, as I mentioned, there's this uh, competition that we uh, were in the award that we won. I think they have 10 different categories. 
if it's digital, if it's consumer experience, if it's social, or if it's ad, or if it's market, how, how do you define what you need? Um, well, first of all, you need to see, uh, you need to have sort of a budget. How much can you spend? Because uh, going to a uh, design communications strategy firm, and you can you can spend a lot of money just by designing your logo and your so forth. That may be important, but you always have to see what what is it that you're looking for. So look at different types and try to browse to see what are they good at. If somebody says we can do everything uh, and there are not that many, I'd be a little bit suspicious. Because uh, there are very, very many specialties. Uh, I don't, we don't do ads. Uh, we've worked with others who can do that. We don't do design. We work with others who can do that. We're good at the strategic part. We're good at the, especially when you work with government and timeless societal issues and having uh, a lot of traditional media. We're not the best when it comes to the digital and the uh, uh, social media. That's not where we do our best work. Uh, but depending on where you're, uh, what you're looking for, uh, Find the ones that are a little bit free. But always go back to the business goals. Uh, even with, when you're talking to the firm. Because uh, if they don't understand your business goal, they won't produce good results with you. Uh, they should ask all the time. Some of they don't. I've seen that a few times where you want to be very creative and do very things that might look good. But if it doesn't go back to your business goals, it won't help you. Uh, try to define immediate and long-term needs. You might need someone immediately who can help you set up the website, who can design these things and make the basic. Well, that's what you need right now. And uh, try to define what's on a need to know on a good to have basis, even for your communication needs. And be very open about it when you're talking to communication firms. It's as important as talking to them about the budget, because uh, if uh, you might get the wrong impression of what's possible if you don't talk about the budget, uh, and you will be wasting your own time and theirs. Uh, and as I said, look at several categories depending on what your needs are. If it is the websites that's most important, if it is social media, well, you should look at firms that are very, very good at digital. And we've been looking at where do you reach your audiences. Well, if it, primarily, if it is primarily those channels, you should find the digital firm. Uh, I would also ask for references and look for reference cases. What have they done previously? And not only major things. How have they worked with smaller companies? What are their experience of working with smaller companies in your case? What are their experience of working both nationally and internationally? That's another part you should ask yourself. Many of you are going international, so that's, that's an important. Yeah, and look at previous cases. Any questions regarding this one? If you're considering. Um, another thing that I can should state is that what I've been talking about today, uh, there's a lot of things that's just free. Google it and try to use it. Um, that's my, uh, it's, it's a lot cheaper than hiring people a lot of the time as well. But, but the strength of having someone outside is questioning you and getting, getting further. Yeah. But in many cases, I mean, you just get, you depend on the information that you get from an agency. I mean, for us, we, we are good at many things, but we, Sometimes we need like the kick in the right yeah. direction, or that they would teach us or to think right, and then you want to handle it. And yeah. Oh, you're not going to be depending on. Agency. No, that, that, I think that's another important part. Uh, don't be dependent. Uh, try to have a possibility to, if it is, manage your own website and do things. Uh, don't let the consultants have all the connections with politicians or decision makers or uh, reporters. Do it yourself. That we all, um, I, 
apart from this part of the job when I get to stand in front of people and talk, uh, being a consultant in communications and being in the background, having the client put forward, uh, having them uh, on stage. Uh, and I think that's the best way of working. That's always our advice. We shouldn't be in the way. You are the most important person always. Uh, so uh, so that, I think that's, that's one of the most. But this is what we're going through, going through. I hope this can be a basis for your own. But now I want to spend some time. What, what is it that you want to dwell further into right now before we finish up? that we've been talking about. We can take a few minutes of everything. <laughs> Hard to think of any one thing. I guess for me, some yeah. concrete uh, stuff on how to actually write these things. You know, press release, I've been trying to yeah. add it. Okay. But you know, how do we, how do you structure a press release? Okay, we can do that. Let's say there are five parts, four or five parts of a press release. You have a heading, and uh, let's say that we're, we're inventing something here now. Um, we have a uh, new research shows your simple heading. The next is the first paragraph, um, which in yes, uh, which is basically uh, uh, first. this is stating, this summarizes the whole news. This is basically two to three sentences. Uh, that summarizes the whole news. Try to condense it into two or three sentences. That's a two summary. So that's the first paragraph. Uh, usually I do this one in bold as well, just to enhance it. Uh, and then comes the bulk of the press release. Uh, so here's, let's say, a second paragraph. Uh, which gives a little bit of the background. Uh, if it is the research, you might name the researchers. Uh, you might name uh, uh, some numbers from the findings. Uh, this shouldn't be more than, let's say, four to five sentences. The next part. Here comes your condensed message as a quote from the spokesperson. And that's, that's going back to what is your main message that you're trying to put out? You try to uh, put it together with the news. Oh, this new research shows that, uh, and then you have your own message. So a quote from the spokesperson. Uh, if it's a longer one, you might delve into, and the second finding, this is optional, so you have depth. And you might have an additional quote, either from the spokesperson or from some other spokesperson. That's, you can use, but I usually have that. Um, and finally, you have uh, contact. Uh, which is usually uh, a repeat of the name of the spokesperson and their title and their phone number and their email. So they can contact you for further information. And often we have a uh, final boilerplate, which is the last thing in uh, the bottom, which is basically the description of the company. Uh, well, what's your company's uh, name, what's your mission, and so forth. You, most companies have sort of a mission statement. That's what you use as a boilerplate. You might even, we, we, we put our own, uh, some of our clients in it sometimes uh, to show them 
companies we are working with when you issue press releases. So it's the boilerplate in the end. That's the basic structure of a press release. Does, does that an answer to your question? Yeah, yeah. Good, that was one. Was mm -hmm. Perfect, that was one. We have time for more. <laughs> Perhaps you can say something about uh, just experimenting and trying new things. Don't be afraid of just no. try. Uh, every, everything, as I said previously, the first press release you write will probably not get published. <laughs> uh, sorry to say, because mm -hmm. if you're a new company, it's the first time you do it, you need experience, you need to try out. Uh, if, you, if you make it, great. Uh, but try to, try to find people and follow up. If you send it out, don't just sit there by the phone and wait and hope. Contact some report and say, we just issued this, um, uh, and uh, you basically tell them what's in it, because they get so many. Uh, the exclusiveness is if you have exclusive things. For example, as I said, you have the new report, you have the new numbers, they, they aren't out yet. Uh, so that's, that's one way. You can also, of course, comment on others. Uh, a way to practice writing opinion articles isn't to start the debate, is to react on somebody else. Uh, see if there's, if there's an issue that you find very, or that's of importance for your company. Can you provide an answer to the op-ed article that's out in any paper? That's a, it's, the, the answers are usually shorter. They publish more than one answer, so there's a higher percentage of getting published. Uh, and, and it's good practice. And you might start building relationships with the people who wrote it. You don't have to be overly critical of the op-ed. You can say, well, they, they're uh, uh, putting the light on a very important issue, but there's a different solution. Or that, that's a way of doing it. So, so that's the thing I would suggest. Look at uh, opinion and articles, and if you want to practice writing them, write an answer to one instead of writing a new one. Uh, I was so actually toying with the idea of, of uh, writing press releases and sending to not so important press. <laughs> the thing is, not so important press is a good. As, uh, well, just to screw up in, in, in an arena uh, that doesn't matter too much. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well. I wouldn't be too afraid to screw up. <laughs> but the issue is finding the right news outlet. It could be the smaller, as we were talking about with allergies, it might be the newsletter for the uh, organization for people with allergies. That might be the most important channel there is. Uh, and they usually have a lower uh, threshold than uh, the major traditional papers. Depending on. So try to identify surgically the best channel. That, that could be the best channel sometimes. And that's easier. Uh, when we work with politicians, there's, uh, there's a trick way. Uh, not all of them are from Stockholm, Gothenburg, or Malmö. They're from a smaller town. Mm -hmm. So can you write something in their home paper? Or get something published in their home paper? They are most likely to read it. It's so much easier to get published in local papers than in national ones. Mm -hmm. And if you name the politician, mm -hmm. it will appear on their media evaluation, so they will read it. So you can be published in a very, very niche paper or magazine, as long as it's published. But if you have the important politicians or decision makers name in it, they will most likely read it. I don't know, but you're probably updated on this, how, how many people actually read the local free papers that you get. Because it used to be when I was in another business where where end consumer was relevant to me, I I thought of it as not important media, and I was so wrong. Uh, we actually worked with one of the major publishing houses uh, not too long ago, and it is still one of the most important channels, especially if your clients are over forty. Under forty, not so important unless you need to include their parents. Uh, but over 40, it's a very, very important channel. 
th this was at, actually at a time when most people still had had a, their daily paper, yeah. and they tended to confuse the the, the free uh, local paper yeah. with they thought they'd read it in the yeah. Paper. But but it, it all depends on the uh, the, uh, the analysis of your audience. Uh, what what type of media do they consume? Uh, there's a special tool you can use for doing that. And you can, there's a big survey where they ask, I think, about 20,000 people every year what type of media they consume. That's a very powerful tool to find out which media they're using. We, we use that for working with uh, a university. Um, and they wanted to uh, uh, broaden, or they, they wanted to enhance their uh, the brand for other university professionals, people who work at universities. And within this tool, you could define uh, education and you could define what sector people worked in. And by defining people with doctor's degrees and by defining people that worked in public sector, you can pretty much realize that a bulk of those people are working at universities. And then you can see, what do they read? Uh, of course, they read the major newspapers in Sweden. Of course, they look, listen to the public radio and public TV. But apart from that, we realized the Swedish Golf magazine was one of the most read magazines in this group, and a couple of other channels. So we surgically uh, produced a couple of articles for these magazines, because we know this is something that this group actually reads. And they will read about this university and in a whole new setting, broadening the brand for that university. So with this tool, you can you can find these types of audiences, um, and the, the local paper, of course, they have a digital version, which is read fairly well as well. So they are still fairly important as news providers, but. Once again, it's always dependent on your audience. Uh, one of the things I didn't have as one of the tools is all the podcasts that are out there. They can be both earned and paid and owned. I mean, you can create your own podcast. And have, uh, I know, for example, a, uh, a law firm, uh, they have their own podcast. And that is partly because they want to uh, provide a platform for their clients. They keep their clients happy by having a podcast, making their clients important by inviting them to the podcast. <laughs> That's one way to do it. And of course, they have listeners, and, uh, and they also use it to attract new talent, because they listen to what these clients do, and they can, uh, for recruiting. Um, but depending on the, what audience you have and the goal, you can have use different platforms. Uh, yeah, I just want to say, don't forget where you can use the, uh, the partner organizations as well, of course, and the, the project from Technordic uh, to just boost your news and maybe also get feedback um, on press releases, you know, headlines, for instance. Yeah. So make sure to, to notify us as soon as you, you release anything, and we can, we can help you boost it and share it, of course. And with that, it's 12 o'clock, I realize. <laughs> I was supposed to end up. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I've had a very fun morning with you. I hope this will help you to structure your work. I hope I've been able to give you some insights into how you can work with uh, outside help if you need it and if you can afford it in the case. Uh, and uh, if you have any questions, feel free to email me. Um, no, I didn't put that out, but it's as simple as this. Thank you, Johannes. Uh, and do take uh, Johannes up on his tip. If you don't have access to Johannes at all times, ask Google. Uh, and also ask us in the community. We have this, I don't know if everyone is registered on Slack already. If you're not, do register. That is where we try to communicate with all of you together and from us in the project so that we can help each other connect, find partners, and help each other build a better place for these races. Um, and we will also share 
this video, for instance, on Slack, and videos from other workshops from these two days. So there will be an email to all of you in a few days with a link to register for Slack if you're not already on there. But uh, do connect, do share uh, what challenges you have and see if someone can help you. Uh, if not one of your members, maybe we from the project can give you some input.